Hello everyone and welcome to another World Snake Team tutorial. In this video I'm going to be showing you how you can install the CentOS uh, base system that we'll be using in the majority of the future tutorials that I offer. Um, so we'll be using the CentOS minimal install and it will be done in a virtual machine. So I will be showing you how you can do that within VirtualBox just so you are aware of the other system settings that are in play. Okay so let's get started. So if you open up the VirtualBox Manager, you can then go ahead and create a new virtual machine. I'll be calling mine CentOS 7 Minimal. And what you will see is that by using the word CentOS uh, in the title or the name, it actually guesses the correct settings for you. So just make sure to use the type Linux and version Red Hat. Okay, uh, you can then choose how much memory you want to allocate it. I will be using the two gigabytes. However, you can stick with the suggested 512 meg. That's not a problem. It works just as well. You can then choose to allocate a hard drive or create a new one, which is what I've just clicked through to do. I'll be using the virtual box disk image, which is dynamically allocated, and I will let it have 20 gigabytes and then I'll click create so once that's complete I'll go to settings and let's choose a few of the options so I'm going to give it bi-directional access to the clipboard and give it drag and drop access as well just makes things a little bit easier for debugging I'm then going to change the number of processor calls to 2 and in the storage option, I'll be letting it use the uh, the minimal ISO that I've downloaded from their website. And finally, I'll just be changing the network adapter to a bridged adapter instead of a NAT. Um, this is just so that it can interact with the rest of the uh, machines on the network. So once you're happy with everything, click OK and then we can run the virtual machine by double clicking it, which I clearly didn't do. Okay, and I'm just going to be doing a standard install. I won't be testing the media because I know that it does work. I have used it many times over the last week or so, so it works perfectly well. And one thing just to let you know is that when anything does uh, or is happening that might take a little while, like the install, I will be pausing it just so you don't have to watch anything. Okay. So the first thing you're going to need to do is go ahead and change the language to suit you. So I'm going to be using the English United Kingdom. And then click continue. And then on the next screen, you'll be able to configure any of the other options you need. So you can see there's the installation media. Then there's the software selection, which is where you can choose any additional packages you may want to install. I won't be using any of this because if I do need a package installing, I will go ahead and manually install it. And then I can click done. I can then change the installation destination. So if you do need to set up anything fancy with the actual uh, hard drive configuration such as RAID, then you can do this here. I won't be able to be sticking with the default configuration. And then I'll click Done. And then finally I'll be setting the network details. So for the host name I'm just going to call it Defiant. And that's just because I know that the machine is going to eventually kick off at me uh, for doing something wrong. So at least with that name, I think it's a little bit more appropriate. You can obviously choose to have something more uh, suitable for you. And then once you've done that, you can go ahead and configure your network adapter. So if you do need to set up a static IP address, then you can go ahead and go to the manual option. However, I'm just going to leave this as DHCP just so that it, um, I can change this in a future video. Okay, so go ahead and click save and then you can enable the Ethernet adapter. So I'll click on 
and then you can click done. Okay, so that's everything. So I'm just going to click begin install. The, uh, you then have the option to go ahead and choose a root password. I'm not going to be using a secure one just because obviously it's going to be used for demonstration purposes and won't be accessible to the outside world. As you can see, it's a weak password, but that's fine. So I'll have to double click done. And then for user creation, I'm going to give it the username Wilson. Whoa, that stuck a little bit. Uh, Wilson18. And it will be an administrator, which means it has pseudo privileges. And then it will just be the same insecure password, which apparently is not the same. There we are. And then click done again. And again. There we are. Okay, so I'll go ahead and pause the video here and then. Uh, once this is finished and installed, I'll go ahead and resume the video and we can go ahead and finish everything off. Okay, so once that's finished, you can just go ahead and click reboot. And then once this is, um, has rebooted, you should be greeted with the login screen where you can enter your username and your password. I'll just wait for that to go ahead and complete, and then we know that the installation is complete or that everything is finished. Okay, and if you did decide to install a desktop when you did this, you obviously would um, see that instead, but this is the default login screen. So just to make sure that we can log in, let's give it a go. And there we are, you're logged in. Okay, so I hope this video has been useful. If you do have any questions, please make sure to leave those in the comments below or wherever on the website if you've got any suggestions same goes for that uh, if you didn't like the video make sure to give it a thumbs down and let me know why and if you loved it and want to see more then thumbs up and uh, i'd love to see you in the next one so thanks everyone and see ya